welcome back to a new video guys. Today is Saturday, it's the 26th of December, Boxing Day. Um, and actually today I'm gonna to be doing some chest and triceps workout. And I'm back in my garage gym as well, as you can see, just because in London at the moment, gyms are all closed, obviously just due to COVID and everything. So uh, for a while, I'm not too sure how long it's gonna be, but maybe till New Year at least anyway, gonna be back in my garage gym. But as I said, I'm doing chest and triceps. First exercise I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna show you the exercise first, then I'll go through it. But it's basically banded, uh, flat dumbbell flies. It's more of a pre resource exercise. But I'll show you the video first, and then I will go through why I'm doing the banded and how to do it properly. Cigarettes in tiny liquor bottles, just what you expect. Inside her new Balenciaga viral mess Turned dreams into an empire Self-made success Now she rolls with Rockefeller As you can see, in that first exercise, I use the band here. This is actually a purple band, and I use dumbbells. So um, doing the dumbbell fly and banded together, what it basically does, it just creates extra tension, extra more, extra weight. Um, so so someone does a kind add more weight, and I want progressive tension as well. So for example, with bands, as you add like that, it's slightly easier. As you go inwards a bit more, it creates a little bit more tension, so harder uh, for the end portion of the movement. And with dumbbell flies, it's basically the opposite. The further you go down, it does get harder. As you come up, it does slightly get easier because your dumbbell is literally over your chest already and it's not putting your chest as much as well. So basically what it does is creates progressive tension. And the good thing I like about this is actually I'm trying to make it more similar to cable flies. So obviously cable flies, it's the same tension the entire time when you're going back and forth with that. With dumbbells, as I said, it's not really tension the entire time. And with bands, it's more tension on the end portion of the movement. So it kind of, you're able with this movement, you're able to get more of a squeeze in the muscle when you bring arms close to each other. So really for this one, you don't need too much weight because it's about squeezing and feeling the muscle as much as possible. Go down, still get a good stretch, literally as far as you can, or as far as you can safely, but just before your shoulder, if your does shoulder does start hurting, just before your shoulder hurts. Um, so you're gonna go all the way down and then basically bring it up. And this one, you can actually get the dumbbells just to really nearly touch each other. If you're doing normal dumbbell flies, Personally, I like to have them so you're about five or six inches away from each other. Otherwise, you put two close to each other, they can bounce off each other, or they're more dead weight because it's just going down at that. But with uh, with the and the bands, it makes it harder because it's also pulling it out sideways because the band is doing that. Uh, so yeah, I was doing that as my first exercise. Um, I thought today I'm going to do a little bit different training chest. I thought I'd do a pre-exhaust just because I don't actually have a lot of weight, obviously, in my, my garage gym or just garage in general. Um, so I thought it's good to do pre-exhaust so when you go into more pressing movements I won't need as much weight just because my muscles are already pre-fatigued from this exercise before. Alright so now you're going to see my second exercise. Okay so my next exercise, exercise number two, is just going to be flat dumbbell flies. Just normal dumbbell flies. Uh, the weight wise I'm not too sure, I think it's about 41 or 42 kilos I've got here. I'm trying to get as many reps as I can, maybe 15 reps after the, uh, the dumbbell flies beforehand. It is a little bit harder. Uh, but I'll see what I can do. And I'll go through the form of my pressing after the exercise as well. So with this exercise, with flat dumbbell flies, when you go down first of all, you lay down on the bench and try to engage your scapula as much as you can. So what I mean by that is basically, as you go, basically go back onto the bench, bring your shoulders back as far as you can. So your shoulder blades are basically squeezing each other and keep your chest forward and shoulders back, as I said, the entire time. What that does 
So it's basically, basically it stops activation of your front delts. If you don't really do that too much, or if you're pressing and your shoulders end up coming forward, what you're basically doing is engaging your front delts more than chest. And obviously this is a chest exercise, so I'm trying to isolate my chest as much as possible. Obviously the front delts will come into play a little bit, but you're trying to minimize that as much as possible. So chest up, shoulders back, have your contact, uh, contacts on the bench as well, and on the ground, so you have both feet on the ground, your bum on the bench the entire time, and your upper back on the bench the entire time. And trying to keep your back of your head on the bench for uh, most of it, or as much of it as you can. As you struggle, your head may come forward slightly, but just don't make sure you don't overstrain your neck too much. Um, so for this one, we want to do when we go down. Uh, when you go, we want to try to go basically more. Let's go all the way down as you as if you had a barbell. So the handles are just in line, just in front of your chest, basically. And then going to press up. And when you press up, try not to completely straighten your arms. Try and keep that very slight bend in the arms, just so it keeps tension on the chest the entire time. If you do completely straighten it, what it does, it takes tension off the chest and literally just goes through your arm, through your bones, basically. And it can be more damaging if you completely straighten your arms especially for people that have hypermobility in your arms. It could bend slightly more the other way and it can be damaging. So to keep a very slight bend in your arm as you press up and then come down nice and slow. And when you saw me doing it there, you saw I wasn't just going too fast, like just repping it out. I could get quite a lot more reps than I actually did. I think I got 12 reps there. Um, if I was basically repping out too fast. So control the movement, feel the chest working. As you come up, press, trying to squeeze the chest as much as you can, then come all the way down. With the dumbbells that I got, because oh, it's in the uh, change ones that you put weight on, as you see, I've got two massive weights on each side of the dumbbells, which is two 10 kilo plates as well. So it can be quite awkward or difficult. Um, for example, if you got all the way down, it may end up touching your, um, or your arm or your front delt because it gets in the way. But if you do have the same problem as me, this should just go as far as you can, literally till you, the dumbbells allow you, basically. Uh, but yeah, so that is the flat dumbbell uh, chest press. Um, and I've been doing four sets of this and I'll probably do, probably trying to get 12 reps um, on each set. And I'll say the exercise I did before, as I said, was the dumbbell flies with the bands. And again, I did four sets of that and I did 15 reps. Okay, now you'll see my next exercise. Also another thing about doing the pressing, your elbow positioning. So when you do it, you don't want to basically be your elbows up high like that. That's going to be creating a lot of tension on your front delts as well. And you don't want to be too far in like that. I thought that would work more of your triceps. So literally just in between, about 45 degree angle. So not that, or that, about there, should be fine. So literally you wanna have it, so when your, your elbows are down like that, they're in line with your middle of the chest, like nipple sort of area. So literally all in line like that, and you're gonna press, as I said, normal pressing. And when, you, when it does get hard, you wanna make sure that you don't flare out your elbows too much, otherwise tension will go into more your front delts. If you feel like that you're doing it too much near the end, that shows that it's the end of the set, and then you have a rest and do another set. Or if you want, if you keep doing that a bit too early on, you can maybe slightly lower the weight. It may be a bit too heavy, the weight. My next exercise is incline dumbbell press. So incline dumbbell press, it's gonna be about a 30, 35 degree angle. My bench actually is maybe slightly higher. Um, it's just the way it is. In fact, as you can see, I've actually got two plates underneath the front of it, just to raise up a little bit. So it's not such high of an incline. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna do incline dumbbell press. It's gonna be working more of the upper portion of the chest as well. Again, I'll show the exercise and then go through the exercise after it. So with incline dumbbell press, it's actually very similar to flat press. The only difference really is instead of when you're holding dumbbells in line with the middle of your chest, like nipple area, your hands will be slightly higher up in more portion with the upper portion of your chest. But again, just like the, uh, the flat press that like I said, you want to go as you press, keep a slight bend in the elbow and go down literally just before the dumbbells touch your chest or to you just get a good, nice good stretch in the chest as well. So it's gonna be very similar. And for this one, you cannot do as much weight you're doing flat because the upper portion of chest for most people is usually the weakest part of the chest. 
Some people, maybe if they do a lot of um, incline pressing and not much flat, maybe their um, incline could be a little bit uh, stronger. But in the most cases, um, flat is usually stronger. So you don't need as much weight. And as you can see, when I was doing it, I wasn't going too fast. Again, nice and controlled. Again, elbows not flared out too much, just come in slightly. And when you do flare the elbows, uh, sorry, when you bring the elbow in slightly, the dumbbells might be more of a slight angle. So like that, you may be holding it like that. So the dumbbells are not like hor um, horizontal in line. It's maybe like a slight angle just to go basically with your elbows. But yeah, all right, now I'm gonna go on to the next exercise. Okay, so my next exercise is gonna be um, a, just a very slight incline. So if you can see, but it's about maybe 10 or 15 degrees incline. And um, what we're gonna do is close grip press. So my hands are gonna be palms facing each other like that. Dumbbells basically gonna be touching the entire time, leaning against each other. I'm gonna be pressing up and down like that. This one is working more of the inner portion of the chest. It is a slight incline like that, as I said. Um, so we're working slightly more of the upper portion of chest, a mid chest and upper portion uh, together as well. So as I said, dumbbells leaning against each other. You're gonna go down, all the way down as far as you can to dumbbells more or less touch the chest gonna go up as you press up trying to bring your palms out like that so trying to bring your uh, wrists towards each other basically and palms out slightly and that help get extra squeeze in the chest as you, and as well as you come up bring your elbows close to each other again squeeze in chest and back down and for this one I'm done how many reps I'm gonna do maybe about uh, 15 reps I'll see how it goes and I don't need much weight for this one either because it's only working more of the inner portion chest and your arms in more of a vulnerable position so you can't really go as heavy for this exercise. But now you're gonna see me do it. So, as you can see, I did 15 reps there. And again, nice controlled, slow movements, trying to fill the chest as much as you can. Again, if you end up going too heavy or too fast, you're just gonna be going through the movement and it's not gonna be working the portion that you're trying to work or the chest at all really, to be, to be honest. So again, nice controlled, all the way down. As I said, I don't know if you saw, as you come up, twist your wrist slightly inwards, trying to squeeze the chest as much as you can. And this one, you can more or less completely straight your arms as well, your elbows, just so you can get an extra squeeze in the chest. I'm gonna do 15 reps. Well, I've done 15 reps on this one. I'm gonna do three sets of this. And then I'll go on to triceps after. Okay, so that's it, the workout done for chest. Now I'm gonna go on to triceps, back of the arms. So my first exercise, what I'm gonna do is just dumbbell kickbacks, pretty simple. The form wise on this one, I'll do it before the, uh, the exercise actually. But what you're gonna do, when you do it, I'm going to be standing up. We're going to have the elbow nice and high. When you do it, we're trying to keep the elbow fixed in that position the entire time. Basically, horizontal in line with your shoulder. Your elbow should not drop. And when you kick back, you should not be doing that. Keep your elbow high the entire time. As you kick back, bring it all the way up to your arm. It's completely parallel, all in line, completely horizontal. And you're going to go up as high as you can. Squeeze the tricep as much as you can. Down to about 90 degree angle in the elbow. And back up again. Not too fast. Nice and slowly again, squeezing the muscle as much as you can. And reps wise, I'm not too sure, maybe about 15 reps. Now I'm gonna do three sets on each arm. Oh, 
So now I'm on my last exercise of the entire workout and it's actually going to be a mix of two exercises and a superset, both for triceps. So first exercise is going to be EZ bar skull crushes and I'm going to go through the form after it as well. Um, superset with just uh, body weight bench dips uh, to work, work the main portion of the triceps. So you're going to see me doing it and then after I'll go through with you the form. So with the skull crushes, form-wise, what you're going to do, you're going to make sure, basically, when you set up, you're going to have your hands, I'd say, more of the inner portion of the EZ bar. Uh, you can do whichever, whichever way you prefer, but personally, I like to put arms a bit closer. And when you go down, what a lot of people do is basically go down towards their forehead. What I'm doing instead is basically go down to more of the crown of my head, to the top of my head there. So basically, instead of my arm completely straight, it's going to be over my body, over my head a bit more, just like that. So I'm going to go down towards my head, I don't know if you can see in the video very well, but down towards the top of my head, my crown, and then back up. And this way, what I feel better doing this way is that you get much more stretch in the movement as well. So you're stretching tricep each rep you do. And you keep tension on the muscle the entire time because if your arms can be straight, basically pointing straight up, as soon as you come up, it takes the tension off the triceps. So when you start angle like that over your head a bit more, it keeps tension on the triceps the entire time. Um, and again, you're gonna go up. You can completely lock out if you want to, or just keep a very, very slight bend is fine. As long as you can feel the muscle, the triceps activating and squeezing as much as possible. So next one, as I said, superset was dips. With dips wise, what you wanna do, you wanna to try to go as far as you can all the way down. So basically more or less to your elbows are basically parallel in line with your shoulders, horizontal, um, as far as, or as far as you can anyway. And then go all the way up, trying to squeeze the triceps as much as you can. And as well, trying to keep your elbows tucked in as close as possible. On this exercise, I didn't actually do, uh, my elbows weren't tucked in too much. Well, partly because I did back yesterday and my lats still feel a bit fatigued or uh, pumped when I do it as well. So it's harder for me to bring them in at the moment. But usually you try to bring your elbows in as far as you can. Again, chest up, good posture, all the way, full range of movement. And for that one, I would literally just go into failure. So I think I did 15 reps there. But with that, you can literally go failure that's fine because it's just like the, it's like at the end of a superset. Okay, so that is my workout complete. Hope you did enjoy it. If you did, please give it a like. Uh, please put a comment in the comment section below if you want to or if you want to, if there's anything in particular you want me to do, you can let me know. And thank you for watching. Please subscribe.